looking for the right um, most important inspirational part of her life and her work and her being. And I think we agreed after a while that the most inspirational attitude of her was being very firm in the middle of the storm, uh, despite all the thing coming at her, uh, just being there and doing the things that she thought she had to do. That inspires us really also hopefully in our own actions. I think she was quite extreme in her opinion and I'm more like uh, in between moderate. Yes, moderate. moderate. Um, so that inspires me because I'm not really extreme in, in what I think. I can slide to different opinions, but she was really like, this is what I think and this is good for the Samenleving, the Samenleving society. So that's one thing that inspires me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, I also think she's, um, she was really tiny, like I am. And, um, but still, it didn't stop her for, uh, from being outspoken and just being out there and just um, like raising her voice. Also now we have uh, like a difficult time or you cannot compare to the difficulties that uh, Rosa Luxemburg went through, of course, but it's a difficult time. And if, if you read her, her letters and her, her, her works, she always keeps, she, she looks at the clouds, she looks at the birds, she talks to the birds and she... She's happy and she tries to, 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 to find happiness in life, even if it, life is very hard. Yeah. And that's very inspiring, I think. It's really inspiring to be able to, to yeah, put yourself out there and, and don't be afraid of, I don't know, of um, getting shot. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, by yeah. words. <laughs> shot by words or criticism or... And, yeah. and she was a woman, but the fact that she was a woman was not of great importance for her. She, she fought for... Human beings. Human beings. If you mm -hmm. were, were um, a man or a woman or um, the, the kind of color of your skin, it didn't matter. Actually, when we started researching, we didn't know. I was triggered because there was an uh, unfinished uh, Bertolt Brecht play about her twice, two pieces which he never finished, he knew her. And that was just, who is this woman? Why did Bertolt Brecht want to write about her? Uh, what's the history behind it? And then you come uh, on the, the story of, of her murder and all these things. And then we started reading her political uh, writings and we thought we will, we will stumble upon uh, dated communist things, I don't know. But how often I thought, you put this in the paper today, you need to work, use a little bit different vocabulary because it's 100 years ago, but you put this as an opinion in the paper today, it is still true, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. She talks about the ecological uh, disaster that she, 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 she sees coming, the, the social uh, problems, the, the capitalism, that the, the 1%, what we now call 1%, she describes, she, she describes how it comes about. And I was kind of shocked that it is still true 100 years later. We didn't solve anything, actually. So it's, it's, it's incredibly relevant for today. Well, it's a pity that it's still relevant, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, it is still relevant. Like she said, um, all these minorities, but also um, the environment, um, animals, like they all have rights and um, we still have to fight for the rights of every living creature, but also the environment and nature and, uh, yeah, so. And, and, and what she said, uh, writes in, in one of her letters, that every moment there is someone being sacrificed on the great author of, of money, and that is still happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, often don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. We think we, we, we are doing a lot of good things, but, but still someone is getting sacrificed for that. Yeah. And we also, we think we, we do things because of um, our own freedom, our own freedom of speech, our own freedom of thought, but 
our thoughts are um, are created uh, yeah. by capitalism yeah. and and by uh, these few lucky few people yeah. on mm -hmm. top and yeah even if we think no I'm an individual and yeah, and yeah. I think for myself you don't it's especially our thoughts about the future about uh, accumulation of that's capital uh, the accum accumulation of capital that it needs that capitalism needs to grow and grow like a monster always eating more and more colonization and now even uh, data uh, stealing all the data from people and so so it has it has to be growing and that's kind of a Nostradamus predict, prediction of her kind of and that was sometimes really freaky let's see she uh, theoretically said already about 2020 some things she hoped never would happen her death <laughs> so in fact we use the the four seconds she falls into the water. That's kind of the frame story of the opera. And then, in fact, all the things she thinks about in those four seconds, uh, it goes from highlights and depths of her life. So, in fact, we use her death, the moment of her dying, uh, to think about her childhood when she was 15 years old, when she really had the, the, the source of her socialist thinking. We, she thinks about her loves, about her political struggle, about her revolutionary struggle, about her politics struggle, but always from the point of looking back. I think in the end, <laughs> everything um, we show is um, part of the, the, the core, which is um, that she had to fight to to stay uh, to stay strong and to um, because she also she says I'm standing in the in the midst of a storm yeah and 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 I'm trying to hold on and mm -hmm. and and that's you because see all, in, all in different war. moments of her life it's in 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 the different parts yeah. Also, the, of course, we, we had to use the letters. It's, it's her most uh, 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 visible legacy is, is her beautiful letters. So the letters also have a central place in the play, uh, are being read uh, because they are so beautiful. It's literature, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, so it switches between the letters and the flashes of her life. Of course, it's too complicated and too much to tell everything, but we hope to... To, that we found the, uh, the most important key points of her, of how she become became who she was in the end. And all those things she thinks about are always kind of about choices she could have made, or points on which she had to stand firm and keep on on her track of fight. Uh, but she could also go home back to her parents or something or go to another un uh, university and just have a degree and not go into politics. So it's always those crossroads we use in the scenes. Uh, and the, and uh, the sacrifices she had to make, we hope we, we can make them uh, uh, tangible that uh, if you do, she, she, she fantasized a lot about, uh, c come on Leo, her lover, let's take a car and let's drive into the mountains and let's, let's go, go have a, a farm somewhere and have children and have a normal life. And then she, she left it again because she was so convinced that she had to do what she had to do. And that's beautiful. And you see her on these crossroads where, or will I visit my mother? She never saw her mother uh, before her death because she was in Paris to be at, at the Internationale. So she had to make sacrifices. That's hard. And could the question for me, for the, the viewer is, what sacrifices are you willing to make for the things you believe in? So we hope that these points are marked in the show. We learned a lot and it was a fascinating process to uh, put all her letters and all her writings. So, so you have all the speeches, all her letters, there's six books of this, so uh, this pile of that, and all her writings and so on, into uh, condensed ideas. Or, so we were really looking for the right sentence in all the books uh, that could be a, a, the title of a song. And, and those ideas were uh, kind of six songs 
uh, we could uh, use them as a hook to put scenes on or to put ideas on. And this idea of uh, uh, of the beauty in uh, seeing beauty in things, she was very romantic uh, uh, person also. And so, uh, so she is just at certain moments. She says, "Wie schön ist die Welt und das Leben." So that and then we thought, ah, okay, voilà, that's 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 curious. In all those violence, she 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 writes, "How wie schön ist das Leben?" So that was one one uh, central idea. And it becomes a song, and in the cafe with the champagne, she sings it with her, with her friends. Uh, so we use the, the one one of the three actresses as a singer, uh, and then a six six choir, uh, six women who are choir, uh, often sings sing along with her, and they repeat or they subscribe the, those ideas we plucked for letters at, out of the, her letters, and then it was a kind of a, a whole puzzle to use other texts of her, and and put them in the same song. So there's not never a song with literary uh, texts of her. It's always puzzled. And all the texts are puzzled. Uh, so that's how we, how we came to a package of uh, six main songs. Maybe also in interesting to, to note that there's only uh, women on stage. It's, it's maybe obvious, but it's, it is so. So you have three actresses, a singer, an actress, actress and a, a pianist player. They all play also the part of Rosa, they play it together. And then uh, six uh, singers. And of course we have to have a certain, we are aware that we have to have a certain amount of modesty towards the subject since we are men. So we, 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 we asked very many um, uh, female artists to join in our team. Uh, our, we had writers, six writers, who, who produced texts from a cell. We put them in a cell for six hours and said, give us texts about uh, the, the letters about her life. We used those to, to create a script. Uh, we have, of course, the singers and the actresses. We, we have the, even the production team is, I will not say 100% met, but even our technician is, is, is a woman. And we tried very much to listen to them because what do we know? We can only be... In, in awe and in and uh, in and in modesty in uh, uh, um, towards this subject. So that's because we have to accept that we are just two middle-aged men. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, of course, it was um, not easy because we have lots of restrictions um, for rehearsals. That was doable. Uh, because we are, we can work like any other business, uh, we, of course, with the masks and with all the safety rules and everything. And normally, we find it very important to find some what we call conviviality in the working pro process. So we we spend time in eating together, uh, going to have a drink, discussing about what what we're making. And now we have to work more strictly and. In, an, in, a, in a nine to five kind of work and then everybody has to go home. But I feel that it did not stop us to, to, to make the play and make it profound. The part of making the play was doable, doable because we are admitted to go to, to work. But uh, we had also very much lots of plans about projects going on the site, working, working with schools, uh, going into public space, doing debates about her work so we had to make a zoom debate we we did to move have to move all the school projects in the public space we couldn't sing so we only did one singing performance in the public space at the canal uh, two weeks ago when her dying birthday was there uh, and then we used those megaphones for the choir, because then we could have distance, still ha still singing together. So we looked for some solutions, but the play on itself was doable because we could rehearse. And I think, especially in difficult times, this is a very good subject to talk about. We didn't know two years ago, three years ago when we started about, it, mm. but it fits very well with our times. So I think Corona and the play do have something in common. Yeah, it was very, very hard in the beginning. <laughs> Because they were like, okay, how are we going to do this love scene? Well, okay, we can't touch each other, we'll be far apart. We, I mean, in the beginning, we tried not to be a bubble. <laughs> but, yeah, in the end, it's impossible to make a play 
without um, so we are like a, getting close to a, each other. A, a professional bu bubble. Yes. Yeah. But it's hard because now the choir is also here and we can't really get along because you have to stay. We do get yeah. along. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> we do get along. We, we, all women we can't. and we do get along. There's no yes. fight till now. <laughs> no, no fight. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, no. <laughs> no, but, but it's very strange because we normally we it it it's very normal that we we touch each other or when when you are rehearsing you try something. Yeah, but like now when you try something and you you do this, you think, <gasps> sorry, yeah, that yeah. I touched you and. It's also part of, of like the process. Normally, I mean, we didn't know each other before we started this process, so we didn't know her also. No, so. <laughs> We, we no, normally you really have to build a trust, you know, to be able to play together. And if if you're not, I mean, it's difficult to build this trust um, during rehearsals. I mean, normally it's during the break and, and during, I don't know, just being able to, to get to know each other. But now it's like, yeah, okay, done, we have to go home. <laughs> it's not, you can't drink it's not something really cozy. <laughs> Yeah. Now we try, or even if the play is about uh, Rosa Luxemburg's murder and her death, in her dying moments she says, but look, there's beautiful clouds and this, the birds are singing. And, and she dies in January and she describes in one letter very beautifully that she says, in January is when the flowers start to grow. You don't see them yet, you see them in February or in March, but they're starting to, starting to grow at the time that she dies and this is a very good... I think people are happy to have this kind of positive message in darkness. The combination is very good. Uh, I feel. Yeah, yeah. Ich war, ich bin, ich werde sein. Uh, so that's kind of a, a message that we also sing with the choir. And hopefully, uh, people are leaving the, the screen of their laptops or the, the, the theater hall with this kind of new hope. Uh, yeah.